Gym owners, time is your only non-renewable resource. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you four of my most favorite tips to successfully manage your time and be effective with getting things done as a gym owner. My name is Mark Fisher from businessunicorns.com and I am so excited to cover this topic. I wanna to start by acknowledging that time management is probably not the best term for what's going on because when you think about it, you can't really manage time. You can only manage yourself. This is a big topic and there are tons of things I can talk about, but today I wanna to keep it simple. I'm gonna give you four of my most favorite tips. Tip number one, plan your day the night before. Understand that success dies in the white space. So specifically, the thing that will be helpful for many of you watching is to create time blocks of your day for what is gonna happen when. Now, part of why I like doing this the night before is it functions as a little bit as a reset ritual that tells your brain that this day is done, I'm gonna focus on other stuff. As far as the specific scheduling practice you use, it depends a little bit on your workflow, but what tends to happen for a lot of individuals that own training gyms is they often are working some sessions on the floor. Great, we know what we're doing. 9.30 to 10.30, training gym Bob. Great, done, we know what's happening there. And then we have a break between let's say 10.30 and 12.30 hypothetically, so we have two hours. Well, what happens there, my beloved gym owner? Well, here's where the opportunity is because if we haven't been intentional about deciding what the most effective use of that time is, and ideally decided that before we find ourselves with the free time, invariably success will die in the white space. We'll find ourselves scrolling through our phones. Perhaps we forget to do something that's important we should do. Maybe we procrastinate on something that we know is gonna move the ball forward that we don't like doing. So understand a lot of the value of creating a clearly written plan, whether that be digital or on a piece of paper, is having some self-accountability for this self-leadership that you're creating here to take action on the things that are actually gonna move the business forward. So if we don't think about that in advance, it is too easy to let literally hours of blocks just float away from you without being as productive as you otherwise could have been. My second favorite time management tip is pretty well correlated with that first First one, which is do a time audit. So anybody who's followed my work for a long time, this is one of those things I'm a broken record about, my goodness. And most people don't have a good sense of how they're actually using their time. The best pulse for this exercise is no less than once per year. In some cases, as often as every three months. So what you wanna do is take a few days and write down in real time, this guy to be on a Google Doc, a piece of paper, there are some apps that are fancy for this, and track how you're spending your time. Because unfortunately, <laughs> usually this is very sobering and you find out, my goodness, I'm not using my time as effectively as I thought. I do seem to have a full 16 hours of waking time in the day and I was getting meaningful things done for about 90 minutes. Now, admittedly, it's not wrong to guesstimate and if you want to go that route, if you go to businessunicorns.com and search time audit, there is a framework that you can use if you want to just bang this out in a 30 minute session where you write down all the things you do, guesstimate how long your time you're taking on each of those and then get a sense of how you're using your time. Now, this one is so important and I rarely see gym owners doing this. This is the third tip and it is about having your team do a time audit. Even as the entrepreneur, it is easy to let the day get away for you to be undisciplined in how you're using your time. Now, particularly if you have individuals on your team that have unprescribed periods of work and that's basically anybody except for your trainers in mid-session. I assume if your trainers are in the session, they're training the person. If the trainers are not training people and you're paying them to do so, we got some problems. Then you wanna probably check out some of my leadership videos. But if you have people that are on salary, even if you have people, let's say at the front desk or made or paid hourly, and you have a number of things you'd like them to do, if you don't help them periodically get conscious about how they're using their time, you're likely leaving a lot of productivity on the table. The goal is being intentional about the only non-renewable resource we have, which is time. Now, perhaps you've already done a time audit for yourself because you're a diligent Business for Unicorns follower and you've already absorbed our content and already run with that particular action step. But if you haven't done this, if you have a team, I think you will find this to be a game changer because on the one hand, the last thing I would want to do is suggest that people are robots and that you're making widgets. But on the other hand, you have to appreciate, let's say if you have three other people that work on your team and they're working 40 hours per week, well, that's 120 hours of human 
power capacity. So I think it's very important for you as a conscientious owner to make sure that time is being used effectively and being put towards things that are mission critical. Now, before I get to the final tip here, I would be remiss if I'd invite you to go ahead, subscribe to this channel. If you're liking what's going on here, if you're liking the time management stuff, this helps me understand what type of content I should be creating. So give me a heart, give me a subscribe, and help me fill the hole inside for my emotionally insecure childhood. Now, my last tip is very provocative. After morning, you're gonna be a little bit controversial here, and that is, let small bad things happen. So I'm not sure where I heard this one. I, I think I would attribute to perhaps to Tim Ferriss. And essentially the gist of this counterintuitive advice is as follows. Ultimately, we want to major in the major things. You wanna spend your time and energy on the most important things that are moving the ball forward, right? And if you look through our tips today, it's kind of the thread we're following. Are we using our time effectively, which means we're we both not wasting time, but also are we working on the right things, the things that are gonna move the business forward? And what this means is because of the nature of life in modern times, we all have so many demands on our time and energy, you're not gonna get everything done. And I gotta say, real talk, this has been something that's been very challenging for me because I'm the type of person that likes to be very dialed in. I really like to cross my T's and dot my I's. I want everything done at a very, very high level. Well, understand, that's not gonna happen. You're gonna have to make some difficult decisions. So to be clear, we wanna let small things happen, not really big, <laughs> bad things, right? As an example, this is a very specific and silly one, but uh, perhaps you get reached out by spam emails. And I, this is strange for me to confess, and I feel ridiculous saying this, but true, true fact. In the beginning of my career, even when someone reached out for me for cold spammy emails, I'd always respond just to be nice. And now I think back how stupid that was. Like who cares? They're, they're, they're spamming me. Now, now that's a probably obvious example and you probably were smarter than me never did that. But we have to be willing to focus on the most important things, which means getting clear on what are the minors. It is a truism of personal development and success mindset that we don't wanna major in the minors. And because a lot of the things that are easy to check off have an allure because we can get them done and get the dopamine hint of like I did it, that's something you wanna be very cognizant of. So when you're thinking about how you're planning when you're in your day, when you're auditing how you're spending your time and how your team is spending your time, remember sometimes it's actually not more important to be inboxing zeroing than working on a project that's gonna really move your business forward. All right, friends, so if you like today's video, go ahead into the description box below. You're gonna find another awesome video about the system that I bring training gym owners through when I'm helping them embark on this journey of time management, create some order out of the chaos so that you're moving forward to create the training gym of your dreams, the life that you want, and importantly, while impacting and serving the communities that you feel called to serve. Thank you so much, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time for more actionable tips, psychological frameworks, and yes, philosophy.